Hello, Jessica here from All the Sparkle with a video tutorial showing you how to use the LED kits from Chibitronics to create an interactive light up card. Today I am also using one of the effect sensors to create a twinkling night sky, so let's get started. I am using the cute bunnies from W Plus 9's Wishing You for the focal image of my scene. I prep my paper with an anti static powder tool and then I ink them with Versafine and heat emboss them with a clear embossing powder. I like to use my Mini Misty to ensure that I get a good impression on watercolor paper. I also stamped the bunnies on a piece of post-it tape and fussy cut them to create a temporary mask. I'm going to blend distress inks for my sky and the masks will cover my bunnies and make sure that no distress ink gets through. This is the Art Bin storage unit I use for my ink blending tools. I got tired of messing up cards by accidentally using the wrong blending pad or getting ink on my fingers when changing blending pads and accidentally smudging my card, so I invested in a blending tool for each of my distressings. I've labeled each tool and I've also added a key to the top of the container and also the inside of the container so it's easy to find the right tool. I store extra blending pads and tools in the same container. Alternatively, you can store blending pads underneath the ink pads and keep just one or two blending tools. For this particular project, I'm blending Abandoned Coral, Salty Ocean, Chipped Sapphire, Seedless Preserves, and Black Soot Distress Inks to create my sky. I start off the paper and use light pressure to gradually build color onto my background. As you will see, I eventually decided to add Picked Raspberry Distress Ink between the Abandoned Coral and Salty Ocean to get a better blend. Once I introduce a new color, I'll go back with the previous color to help soften the transition, and adding the Picked Raspberry really helped. Next, I spritz my panel twice with water and blot off the excess liquid. Water reacts with distress ink and actually moves the pigment around, which is great for creating a starry sky. I'm also upping the sparkle by spraying the panel with a few spritzes of shimmer spray. When I use a colored or shimmer spray, I put my panel into a shallow box to avoid spraying paint or ink all over my work surface. To add one more layer of dimension, I wet a little white acrylic paint and use a paintbrush to flick it over my panel. Once it's dry, I peel off the mask and color my bunnies with Copic markers. Unfortunately, I seem to have turned off my camera for the coloring process but I used neutral gray Copic markers for my bunnies. The bunny on the left was colored with N6, N4, and N3 markers, and the bunny on the right was colored with N5, N3, and N2 markers. And now it's the fun part. First I cut a piece of white cardstock to four by five and a quarter. I will create my circuit on this panel, and it's helpful if it's a little smaller than the card front, just in case things don't line up exactly as you planned. Off camera, I punched three tiny holes in my card front, and now I'm using a pencil to mark where the three holes are on the white cardstock. Chibitronics has this great plastic stencil that you can use to trace over the various sticker shapes so you know exactly where to place your stickers once you've created your circuit. I'm placing the stencil over my three dots and tracing the outline for the LED light stickers. This way I know my lights will line up with the holes I punched on the card front. I'm also tracing the shape of the effect stickers that will cause the LED lights to twinkle. To the left, you can see that I've already created the circuit once on a piece of scrap paper. I like to sketch out my circuit so that I ensure that I don't make any mistakes and I keep all of my circuit sketches in an envelope so that I can pull them out for future reference. I also mark the negative and positive sides of each sticker as a reminder. Next, I take a small piece of cardstock, fold it in half to create a holder for my battery and adhere one side to my circuit panel. I trace the shape of my battery on both sides of the fold and mark the negative and positive sides. My final step before laying down the copper tape is to lightly sketch in lines showing the path of the tape. 
If I wasn't using the twinkle effects, I would simply connect the positive side of each LED light sticker to the positive side of the battery, and the same for the negative sides. However, since I'm using the twinkle effects, there's an extra step of adding a third piece of tape to connect the second positive side of the effects sticker to the LED light. When you lay down copper tape for circuits, you want to make sure that you get a good seal and use only one piece of tape per connection. The adhesive does not make a good connection, so you don't want to use multiple pieces of tape to create the turns. Instead, fold the tape back on itself and crease it to create whatever angle you need. Then using the stencil outline I drew in earlier, I line the stickers up and adhere them to the circuit. Finally, I cross my fingers, add the battery, and hope that the circuit will work. I adhere one side of the battery to my holder, but leave the other unattached. This will allow me to slide a piece of cardstock in between the battery and the copper tape to break the circuit which conserves the battery. Next, I add a double layer of foam tape all around my circuit panel so that my card will be nice and flat when the top panel is adhered. Then I press the battery to turn on the lights and use that as a guide for lining up my top panel over the circuit panel. Then it was time to give my bunnies something to stand on so they wouldn't be floating in the sky. I die cut the meadow border from Lawn Fawn with two different colors of green cardstock. I'm adhering the lighter green border onto my card first and then trimming down the darker green border before adding a sentiment. I prep my green cardstock with an anti-static powder tool to make sure that no extra embossing powder will stick where it's not wanted. I stamp my sentiment from W Plus 9's Wishing You Sentiments with Versamark and heat emboss it with super fine white embossing powder. I use a Swiffer cloth to clean the powder remnants off of the sentiment and then adhere it to the other green border before trimming off the ends. My last step before adding a card base is to insert a small piece of white cardstock between the battery and the circuit to turn off the lights. Once the piece of cardstock is removed, you can press on the sentiment and the stars will start to twinkle again. I love the cool effect you can achieve by adding a little technology to your paper crafting. So that's my card. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial and that it inspires you to try LED lights in your crafting. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try to help you out. You can find links to my blog and all of the products I used in the YouTube description below. If you liked my video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any of my videos. Thanks so much for watching and have a fabulous day.